Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a long awaited one that I have been wanting to make for a really long time. And that is how to have a baby without an epidural and all of the ways that I used to prepare myself and what you can do to prepare yourself for a medication free natural birth. I also just wanna add at the very beginning of this video that even if I say giving birth naturally or medication free, basically the only thing I mean by that is giving birth without an epidural. All birth is natural and no matter what way you have to do it and medication free it implies that you are having no medication at all which is not always the case so even though I might be referring to birth that way I mean no offense using those terms it's just how I feel like it's most commonly phrased if you guys are new to my channel and haven't been following along my name is Ali I have a son who is almost 15 months old who was born in September and I am due in February with a little girl our baby number two I make a lot of motherhood and lifestyle type videos here on my YouTube channel. But really quick, I just want to give you a little bit of backstory about my first pregnancy with my son. I have always really, really wanted to give birth naturally with no epidural. It's just always been something that really interests me, even like long before I was pregnant. I am just one of those people who is drawn to that. So when I was pregnant with him, I had all of my prenatal care at a birth center with midwives, which is such an amazing experience. I love it. I took all of the birth classes. I had very holistic prenatal care and was very, very excited about giving birth at a birth center and possibly having a water birth and everything like that. When I was 39 weeks and four days pregnant with him, we went in for a regular routine checkup at our birth center with our midwife. And at that appointment, I was diagnosed with sudden onset preeclampsia and I was sent immediately to the hospital to be induced. I have an entire birth video where you can see everything in excruciating detail about what happened with that and I will make sure that that is linked in the description box if you want to watch that but that pretty much rocked my world. I had my entire birth plan flipped upside down which is not uncommon. So my birth experience was drastically different than the one that I had spent nine months preparing for. Instead of my natural medication intervention free birth at a birth center, I was high risk in a hospital with preeclampsia. You have to be put on a drug called magnesium and you are not allowed to get out of your bed at all. But even though it was so different and not what I was prepared for, I still felt so prepared and ready for a natural birth that even with all of these new obstacles, I was still able to have my son with no epidural and I still had a really positive, beautiful birth experience. I really think that you can give birth without an epidural no matter what your circumstances are. If it's something you wanna do, you can do it whether that is in a birth center, at a home birth, in a hospital, it doesn't really matter what the circumstances are. If it's something you wanna do, you can do it. I'm gonna go over all of the things that I did to prepare myself for a natural birth and also give you guys as many tips and tricks and little things that helped me along the way. I'm just gonna spill it all out for you. I'm assuming that this video is going to be on the longer side because I have a lot to talk about. So hit the little setting button and increase the speed so that you can watch this video a little bit faster. The first thing that I think is so majorly important when going into labor and delivery with the intention of giving birth with no pain medication is to have a reason why. You need to have strong intentions and a strong reason why you wanna do that. I think if you go into it kind of wishy-washy, like, oh, I'm gonna try and see if I can do it, I think that it's gonna be harder for you. I had so many different reasons why I wanted to do this. First of all, just really wanted to have as few interventions as possible which obviously didn't happen. I had many, many interventions. Something that you guys can look up and research if you want to is something called the cascade of interventions. Basically, once you start doing some interventions, those interventions lead to others, which lead to others, which can sometimes lead to having unnecessary C-sections and things like that. So I'm not gonna get into all of that, but it is something that you can look up if you're interested in. That was definitely one of my reasons is I wanted to avoid that cascade of interventions and I wanted to avoid all of the potential negative side effects of an epidural. And another really strong why for me was that my mom has four kids. She gave birth to all of us with no pain medication. Her mom gave birth to her with no pain medication. And just knowing that women have given birth naturally forever was 
really inspiring for me and I wanted to do it too. I am just so fascinated by all things birth and labor and delivery and pregnancy. I'm just really passionate about it all. As a woman, your body was made to do this. It was made to grow a baby and to birth a baby. And when you're pregnant, you're going to give birth to that baby no matter what. Like your body is going to give birth to that baby whether you like it or not. I just wanted that full experience. I wanted to feel every single part of it. And I just wanted to have that really, really real raw birth experience and that's not for everybody and that's totally okay your body knows what to do which is so fascinating like i remember reading stories about women who had given birth in comas like completely unconscious and their bodies still gave birth because your body knows what to do i just wanted to experience my body doing that if you know what i mean and also another why that I had is that I am so stubborn. When I put my mind to something and say that I'm going to do something, I am going to do it. Something that only made that stronger for me was people laughing in my face when I told them that I was going to give birth at an epidural. This happened to me so much when I was pregnant with my first, which honestly is so annoying that people even think that they can comment on things like this. But I remember telling multiple people that I was not planning on having an epidural and having them literally laugh at me and tell me, yeah, right, just you wait, and all types of just negative things like that. For me, that just made my want and need to do it so much stronger. I don't know if it's because I'm stubborn and I just need to prove those people wrong or what it is, but those comments really just like set my intentions so strong in stone. I was like, oh hell no. In the grand scheme of things, labor and delivery is one day, usually, give or take. It's over so fast. You can do anything in one day. The next thing that I think is so important going into it is to educate yourself on all things labor, delivery, and birth and postpartum and to just learn as much as you can about the process. Knowing so much about what was happening and what was coming next and everything in between made me feel so empowered and so almost in control of the experience I was having. So definitely learn about all of the stages of labor, not just what they are, but what to expect about how long they last, different interventions that might come up during those phases, and also maybe just different coping mechanisms that might work or be good for you during those stages. I really recommend taking a birth class. I think that a birth class was really helpful for me and made me feel really confident going into it. I'm going to go over the stages of labor very, very briefly. I recommend that you research this yourself and do a deep dive into each one, but I just want to talk really briefly about what helped me during my stages of labor and generally just what they are. You start with early labor, which is usually the longest. Early labor is hard for me to talk about because I didn't really experience it fully because I was induced. Everybody will tell you to stay at home as long as you can. I can definitely say I would have 1000% preferred to be at home during this phase of labor than to be in the hospital stuck in bed. So something that the midwives taught us in my birth class for early labor is that when you are having contractions and things feel like they're starting to get a little bit more intense and a little bit more difficult, they basically gave us three steps of things to do to kind of keep yourself progressing at home. The first one is to try to rest and relax, lay down, lay in your bed, lay on the couch, try to nap if you can, watch TV, something like that. And then when you feel like you can't rest and relax and distract yourself anymore, then they said to try to eat something or drink some water, basically like shift to a different activity and do that instead. I definitely recommend eating. Eat as much as you can when you think you're in labor because for me, I was not allowed to eat and I didn't get to eat for like 40 hours and I kicked myself for that so much. So eat while you are still able and while you are still interested, because there will be a point in your labor where you couldn't care less about that, fuel up your body during that early labor process to help yourself later on. After eating and drinking and trying to distract yourself that way, then it's time to either hop in the shower 
or move around, walk around, bounce on your ball, things like that. And they basically told us to just kind of repeat those three steps over and over until you just can't take it anymore, basically. Like I said, I don't have a ton of experience in early labor. So then the next stage of labor is active labor. And this is where things start getting intense. For me, this is where I really kind of stopped talking to everybody. I had my eyes closed. I was focused. I wasn't really able to talk through my contractions very much anymore. This is really where things started to get intense and real. The next stage of labor is transition and transition is wild. Transition is usually the hardest part of labor, but it's also usually the shortest part of labor. It is where things start to get really, really, really intense. And this is where a lot of people who are trying to go pain medication free, give up and say, screw it, give me the epidural. But if you can just hold on a little bit longer, you are so close to the end. I feel like waiting to get an epidural until you are in transition is like such a waste. You might as well have gotten it earlier and not put yourself through all of active labor because transition is usually so short and it means that you're almost there. Normally you can tell you're in transition because this is where you feel like you want to give up. This is where it feels so hard and like you feel like you can't keep going and where moms just start screaming, give me the epidural, I don't care, everything like that. And normally once you get to that point, that's when you can kind of say, oh, I'm in transition. And that was exactly my experience. Everything leading up into transition was totally doable. You know, it was hard, but I was doing okay. And then there was a very specific point where everything felt so intense that I remember thinking to myself, this sounds so bad, but I remember thinking to myself, I hope that they just have to knock me out and give me a C-section so that this will all be over. The second I had that thought, I was like, wait a minute, I must be in transition. And then honestly, just realizing that that's what was happening made transition easier for me because once you can pinpoint that you're in it you know that you are close to the end and you can see the finish line and you're so close and it's really encouraging even though it's also really hard so when you are giving birth and you get to that really really hard place where you just want to give up and say screw it all give me an epidural you're probably in transition and you are so so close to the end so just hold on because you are almost there and it's all gonna get so much easier soon after transition is over you are fully dilated and ready to go normally you'll start to have this overwhelming urge to push for me it felt like my body was already doing it like i couldn't stop it if i wanted to it was just already pushing that baby out which was such a cool thing to experience i know this is not the case for everyone but for me pushing felt like such relief from contractions it felt amazing compared to the contractions from transition so because you are pushing with every contraction and instead of feeling the really intense contraction pain i don't like calling anything with birth painful but instead of feeling those strong sensations with your contractions you're pushing and so you almost get a really really nice welcomed break at least that was my experience so finally getting to the pushing phase was just like amazing for me push like you are taking a big poo that's the only way i can describe it and i literally just focused on that the whole time i just pushed like i was taking the biggest poo of my life and it worked and then after that the next phase is afterbirth and delivering the placenta which i feel like nobody really even thinks about because you are just so wrapped up in baby bliss and you don't even really realize that anything is going on down there now that we have gone over all of the stages of labor i want to talk all about everything that i did beforehand to prepare myself and everything that i did during labor and delivery to help me achieve a natural pain med free delivery i think the most important thing to keep in mind and know going into an all natural labor and delivery is just knowing that it is going to be mind over matter 
It is a total mind game and it truly, truly is mind over matter. You have to really get your head in the right space or it's going to be really, really hard. Because like I was saying earlier, your body is going to do it no matter what. That baby is going to come out. Your body knows what to do. The only thing that you have control over in this experience is your thoughts and your mind. So once you realize that it's just going to be a mind game in that way you can really start preparing yourself and teaching yourself ways to stay calm stay relaxed stay in the zone and basically teach yourself ways to not fight your body and to not panic in labor and delivery basically another amazing thing that i learned in that birth class that i keep talking about is an acronym for the word pain i don't love using the word pain to describe anything in labor and delivery because it's just a totally unique feeling for me i would describe it as very very intense more than i would describe it as painful but a very helpful acronym for pain that we were taught in this birth class the pain you feel in labor and delivery is purposeful every time you feel that intense sensation of contractions it is bringing your baby lower and it's serving a huge purpose. It's also anticipated, so you know it's gonna happen. It's not some out of the blue pain that you weren't expecting. It's something that you can prepare for and anticipate. It's also intermittent, so I can't even remember now. I think most contractions are like two to three minutes apart usually, lasting for about a minute. So when you really break it down like that, you have so much more time without contractions than you do with contractions. And when you look at it that way of knowing that you have two to three minutes of a break in between, and then you have one really, really hard, difficult, intense minute. But then after that intense minute, you have two to three minutes of relaxing, blissful peace. It's really doable and not so bad. Lastly, the pain you feel in labor is normal. This is different than any other type of pain because pain is usually a response to something bad that needs to be fixed. And this is different. It is a normal pain that is serving a purpose and that automatically just makes it so much less scary. It's not like the pain of breaking a bone or having a toothache or having a cut on your arm or something that needs immediate fixing it's a normal purposeful pain just shifting the way that you are thinking of that pain automatically just makes it less scary and less painful almost i always try to compare it to this time when i had an abscess tooth and i had to have an emergency root canal on my tooth i always tell my husband that that abscess tooth pain was the worst pain that I've ever had in my entire life and that I would rather give birth a hundred times with no epidural than have that pain again. That pain was knowing that there was something wrong. There was no breaks. There was no time in between the pain. It was just always hurting and it was something that you just wanted to end and it's hard to explain, but just knowing how purposeful the pain of contractions is, it makes it such a different experience. This is Hawk. I'm talking about you, bud. I'm talking about pooping you out. He doesn't normally have a binky all the time, but for the video. Things that I did to help me prepare and I also did during labor and delivery was setting my intentions in my head and using words of affirmation and visualization as well as practicing breathing and relaxing. This was something that I did the entire second half of my pregnancy and definitely I was doing this all the time in those last few weeks leading up to labor and delivery. So this is something that I did in the shower. This is something I did in the car while I was driving to work and home from work. And I practice this a lot with my Braxton Hicks contractions too. Especially with your Braxton Hicks contractions, I feel like this will really help prepare you. But just whenever you have time and are being like somewhat mindless, doing these words of affirmation, practicing your breathing, relaxing your whole body, visualizing, like all of that really, really helped. So words of affirmation like my body is made to do this 
birth is normal, what I'm feeling is normal, as well as just breathing and really working on keeping my body totally relaxed. Come up with some positive birth affirmations that you can say to yourself. I'm sure you can look up lists of them on Pinterest too. While I was actually in active labor and transition and everything like that, the main thing I did was completely focusing on keeping my body completely relaxed and not fighting my contractions. The worst thing that you can do is fight your contractions by tensing up your body and not letting them do what they are trying to do. Your body's contracting for a reason, it's bringing your baby down and you don't wanna fight them <laughs> even though it really is hard not to sometimes. I pretty much, from like active labor until I was pushing him out, I just had my eyes closed. I was relaxed, I was saying these positive birth affirmations to myself, and every time I had a contraction, this sounds so silly, but I would thank the contraction, or I would say yes to the contraction. Not out loud, this was all in my head. I don't think I said a word while I was in active labor because I was so focused, but I was welcoming my contractions and thanking them and saying yes, and I was breathing through them and doing just whatever I could do to stay calm and relaxed and not tense up my body. And <laughs> get out of the camera. <laughs> Along with that, I was trying to visualize what they were doing. So when I was having a contraction and I was saying, yes, thank you. I was literally picturing my baby moving downward and moving into my birth canal. Basically, I was trying to literally visualize what was happening inside of my body and visualize it progressing. And I would also try to picture it being over, having my baby in my arms, breastfeeding him, and in between contractions while I was resting, I was just working on thinking of those things, staying really positive, staying really calm and relaxed. I feel like my mantra that whole time was just not only just welcoming and thanking the contractions, but I also just kept saying over and over to myself, your body was made to do this. This is normal. <laughs> your baby is coming. You're gonna see him soon. I really feel like welcoming those contractions and thanking them and saying yes, it like tricks your brain and it makes it easier. I can really vividly remember saying in my head over and over yes to these contractions. I really will say that I think that that made things easier for me. Thank those contractions, welcome those contractions, visualize your baby moving down and being in your arms and stay positive. Stay positive, stay relaxed, stay hydrated. Another thing that is gonna be massively important for your entire experience is having a very supportive birth partner. Whether this is your mom, your husband, your partner, your sister, a doula, whoever it is, you want to make sure that they are on the exact same page as you as everything, that they know your intentions, that they know what you want, and that this person is someone that you can trust to advocate for you and be there for you. My birth partner was my husband. I also had my mom and my sister were both in the delivery room with me, but my birth partner was my husband. He was my person. He took all the birth classes with me, prepared fully with me. He knew everything that I wanted and needed. He was like the person who could answer questions for me when I could not. There's definitely a time in your labor and delivery where you were not super able to answer questions and respond to nurses and things like that. And so that is where having your supportive birth partner is really important. It took a lot of stress and worry off of me knowing that no matter what happened, he knew everything that I wanted, not just for me, but also for the baby once the baby was born. Even if I couldn't be talking and communicating as I wanted to be, he could. And just someone who is there to help you and support you in any way that they can. Like I said, we took all of these birthing classes together. We took classes learning all sorts of different coping mechanisms together that we like practice together. It turned out for me in labor and delivery, I didn't really like very much at all. I kind of like to be left alone. I didn't want anybody to talk to me. I didn't want to open my eyes. I just wanted to be quiet and focus and kind of be in the zone by myself. But a few things that I did really like, 
I liked counter pressure on my back, which is something that we learned in one of our classes and something that you'll see all over the place online. Counter pressure really helped me during transition. So definitely look that up and teach that one to your birth partner. My mom brought a lavender essential oil that she kept putting on my chest and on the pillow that I was laying on. And that was actually really surprisingly helpful too. That was not something that I had thought of beforehand. It was just something that she did in the moment and it was really helpful. So maybe some essential oils could be a good coping mechanism as well. And pretty much my husband's number one job during the entire experience was to be the water boy. He was constantly refilling my water bottle and holding it up to me because I was so thirsty. It was so helpful. I almost never even had to ask. He was just always there and always ready. And it was honestly one of the most helpful things that is so small, but not having to grab your own water bottle or ask for it was a really nice thing in that moment. So water to stay hydrated, that lavender essential oil, counter pressure, and everybody leaving me alone and not talking to me were my things that I really, really liked so that I could just stay in the zone and <laughs> focus on staying relaxed and visualizing visualizing this old babe coming out also resting in between contractions you do not want to spend your precious two to three minutes in between your contractions worrying about the next contraction just relax your body and truly rest as much as you can before you give birth you might think in your head like there's no way you can rest in two minutes but you can rest in two minutes i think there are times where i probably fell asleep in between those contractions use that time well and just totally relax and don't spend it thinking about and worrying about the next contraction just rest so in my specific experience i did not get to use any of the coping mechanisms that i learned in a lot of my birth classes because i couldn't get out of bed the entire time i wasn't able to use any of those i know that being able to get up and move around and use your body would have made everything so much easier for me so number one i would recommend taking a birth class where you're going to learn some of those coping mechanisms but if you're not planning on doing that I'm sure there are so many resources online that you can find to teach you all of the different coping mechanisms that you can use and different kinds of relief options that are available to you besides pain medication to make your labor and delivery a little easier. Look into those. I wish that I could tell you from personal experience which ones of those worked for me, but it wasn't the experience that I had. I wanna talk about a few actual resources that I used when I was preparing for labor and delivery too. So I read two different books to prepare. Ina May's Guide to Childbirth, which <laughs> if you are preparing for a natural labor, I'm sure you have already heard of this book because it is so highly recommended by everyone, but I really did like that one. I think it's really helpful and definitely a good book to read in preparation. I also read Hypnobirthing. I'll be honest, I only read half of Hypnobirthing, but I did find it helpful. I didn't ever use any of the tracks or anything. I was really able to kind of take the concept and make it my own with my own relaxation techniques and ways of staying calm and relaxed. So, so I didn't use any of the audio tapes or anything that you can get with hypnobirthing but i do think that is a really helpful way to teach you kind of how to cope and how to stay really relaxed and in the zone during labor along with that hypnobirthing concept probably like a month or two before he was due i rewatched the secret you could read it or watch the movie version i like the movie version it's just a good refresher right before you go into it to remind yourself that you have control over your thoughts for me that was something that i found really helpful i also watched so many positive birth stories on YouTube. That is something I really, really recommend. Surround yourself with positive natural birth stories. Watch other women do it. Know that it's possible. Know that it's normal. Know that it is beautiful and challenging, but not scary. I don't know. I think it's really helpful to watch other people go through it. It helps you know what to expect and it helps you know that it is natural and normal and doable. Watch a bunch of them. I think they're super helpful. And you find a bunch of new moms to uh, follow on YouTube that way. I also listened to a ton of podcasts while I was pregnant, all about birth um. and labor and delivery and things like that. One that I really liked is called the Free Birth Society, which I do not advocate for free birth at all, but I thought that the 
birth stories that were told on that podcast were so empowering and made birth feel so natural and normal, beautiful, and not at all scary. <laughs> Even though free birth is not something that I advocate for or am interested in, I think that that's a really great podcast and it's a very empowering podcast. I know there's a bunch of other ones too, but that was mainly the one that I listened to while I was pregnant with him. I am really, really hoping that I get to have my birth center birth experience this time around. So far, so good. We will see. But I also know now that birth plans change and that's okay. And that you can still have a birth that is empowering and amazing regardless of your situation. So we'll see what happens. Definitely subscribe and follow us on Instagram to see what happens with our upcoming birth here in February. Okay, so I know this video was so long. I think that that is all I have to say. If I forgot anything, I'm sure I will have put it up on the screen and everything like that. But I hope that you guys can learn something from this, take something positive away from this and have the amazing natural birth that you want to. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did, please comment below. Um, if you have any other birth advice that I didn't go over or anything that you found super helpful. I love when the comments can be a place for other people to read through for advice. So leave all of your natural labor and delivery advice in the comments. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram. And I will see you guys all in our next video. So can I call you